do this. All right, guys, welcome to our training. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, everybody, for your cooperation. Uh, and wanted to welcome you to the team. Uh, secondly, uh, we understand that this can be complicated and overwhelming. So I took a lot of time and effort to try to simplify this for you and do it in bite-sized pieces uh, to get you through and successful as fast as possible. So you have my contact information here. Uh, you have David, uh, my partner, David Taylor, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Dalton is here to assist us as well. We have additional contacts for uh, Freedom Forever, as well as uh, financing with Mosaic, leasing with Everbright, and leasing with Sunrun. So if you need any help, uh, you can reach out to them as well. Here's the five-day training schedule. Again, breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. Uh We'll be doing live training every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. to go over any scenarios that you may have problems with or any questions, comments, concerns, those kind of things. Uh, this is the link to the Zoom meeting. It is static. So this is the meeting for every, uh, every, every day. It'll be the same meeting ID. So on day one, uh, I sent you uh, a series of documents, they're all numbered in order. Uh, the first one is the, uh, the welcome, which is what you're looking at now. The second one is the onboarding with Freedom Forever. If you have any questions uh, in that onboarding uh, document, you'll see uh, how it's laid out and follow their directions. I try to simplify it further down. Uh, once you register with Freedom, you're going to get an email from them uh, to complete the training. We also need you to uh, register with Everbright and Sunrun. Here are the links. Uh, Sunrun is uh, a complete pain to deal with. Uh, for some reason, uh, they can't get it together. Um, so if you have any problems, let us know, and we'll try to assist you with that as well. Uh, day two, we're... Uh, starting you off with uh, issuing your credentials and login uh, to our dialer. Um, I give you instruction video, uh, two videos, uh, watch them back to back, and then log into the dialer and start setting appointments for yourself. Um, once you set an appointment, uh, you're going to want to uh, go to Zoom and uh, sign on with them. And what I did was I created a document that shows you where to go to get Zoom. Um, they have a series of different options. The first one is free. The downside to that is it's limited to only 40 minutes per uh, Zoom meeting. So if you are making a presentation to somebody and it goes over 40 minutes, you're going to have to get them to log in and uh, join a second Zoom meeting. So we suggest that you go with the pro version. It's $159 for the year. Well worth it. Uh, but we understand that if money is an issue, uh, obviously, you're going to get along with the free version. Once you set the, um, the Zoom meeting, you're going to want to email them with a link. And what I did was I created sample um, templates for you. Um, setting the appointment, make allowing them to follow the link and the meeting code. Uh, we also want to provide them additional information to kind of educate them. So I created seven different video links that I suggest you share with the customer. Let them look at it before you before the meeting takes place. All right. The second follow-up email is to remind them. 
And then with that, we gave you four different brochures to further educate. I'm a firm believer in you have to give to get. And if you provide them with the information, uh, it's going to educate them and they're probably going to treat you on a higher uh, professional level than if you didn't. All right. So we highly suggest that you give these uh, brochures to them. It goes through the process, goes through questions and answers and does it in bite-sized blurbs, as you can see here. All right. Walks them through the process step by step by step. All right. Going back to the syllabus. So we're doing that on day two. All right. Day three, we ask that you log in, uh, start taking calls, schedule appointments. We're taking you to the proposal training. Uh, we send you a proposal template. Uh, so you have an idea of what it looks like. Uh, we give you another document, creating and submitting a project, which is this. We go through the different stages, clean deal checklist, and so forth. All right, I'm just kind of explaining what's included in the training materials that I sent you so you know it's there and know why it's important. All right, uh, there's training link videos to how to submit leads and create proposals. It takes you through a step-by-step. -step. Uh, this is something that Freedom created. It's a little bit archaic, not really complete, but it'll give you an idea of how to get started. Um, we also give you a guide to go along with watching the video so you can stop the video and look at uh, the paperwork uh, to go along with it. It explains it a little bit in more detail. The same with the Everbright portal training and the Sunrun portal training. All right, day four, we want you to log in, start taking appointments. Uh, we actually give you a document of how to how to start submitting and structuring proposals. I'm going to go through that here in a second. Um, all right. So the way this 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 works is um, you want to find out if you can do both leases and financing. Uh, to really figure out where to start, all right? The first thing you're going to do is all the states are listed. Obviously, we all the states listed are financing, but then we have Everbright and Sunrun, and it tells you what state is available for which company, all right? Once you figure out the state, I then show you which, uh, which utility companies in each state works with what company. So if you're looking for APS in Arizona, both Everbright and Sunrun are both available. Whereas um, SRP is only Everbright, all right? And it goes through the states and the different utilities in each state. So that tells you which proposals uh, you're gonna do. Obviously we want you to issue um, we want we want you to create both proposals, one for uh, financing and one for lease. And you're not going to know which one to present first until you do the um, the probing questions at the at the start of your virtual meeting with the customers. All right, uh, it goes on and on and on. All right, we then created a second document that kind of shows you. Um, basically a, a an appointment presentation outline. Now, obviously it's very complicated. There's ver a lot of different variables that go into it, but this is generally what's going to take place on a step-by-step -step basis, all right? So we're gonna start out by asking probing questions. Uh, we're then gonna present the first proposal, figure out which one best fits their needs based off their answers uh, in the probing question. So if they're more, if you think that they 
are more apt to go with a lease program, present that first, and then do a contrast with financing. So they can see the difference and they'll sell themselves on which one they want to go with. I promise you it's well worth the investment in time to do both proposals. All right. Once you get the hang of it, it shouldn't take you more than 10, 15 minutes to create a proposal anyway. So it's worth the 10 or 15 minutes that you're going to invest in creating that second proposal. The one good thing, the one advantage that we have is that you don't need an electric bill for any of these. You can go just by what they're telling you as their monthly average. All right, so that's a huge, huge advantage. Once you set the proposal, then you can ask for the electric bill uh, and uh, finalize it for them. All right, and then on the fifth day, we go through and I put together a list of all the different financing options, all the different types of loans, and uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, Everbright, I think there's four different uh, products that you have options with, and then Sun Sunrun is just one. All right. Does anybody have any questions for me so far? Um, yes, I have a quick question. Are we going to have like some type of pricing sheet so we can look at interest rates and um, all that good stuff with financing? Yeah, and, and that's what day five is really about. And we can show that, show you what it kind of looks like. Um, Got it. So Mosaic, uh, the document here for financing is 20 pages long. Obviously, it's not one size fits all, right? But I can tell you in creating the proposal, um, what we did was we... Um, this one it's this one also if you're just talking about um seeing the finance options yeah i was just gonna go here this is what i was looking for right so your first option really is to to look at a 399 25 year product all right it's one of 30 different options that you have but this is really the starting point and you could adjust it Again, based off of uh, the probing questions and what their goals, needs, and wants are. All right. Does that answer your question, Louisa? Got it. Yes. Yes. I was just wondering if this would all be maybe like in an Excel sheet for like the different companies, but if it's separate, that's fine. Well, it's all there, right? So all the finance companies or all the, all the financial options for financing are in the mosaic financing options. Uh, they're our finance company, whereas uh, Everbright and Sunrun are both leases. Got it, that makes sense. All right. So with mosaic, it breaks it down by every product that they offer, um, tells you what, uh, what they're all about, what their advantages and disadvantages are, et cetera. Right, it's, it's really complicated, but um and really archaic so <laughs> all all these documents that you're looking at are broke came from about 450 documents that were individualized in the freedom portal so i went through a lot of effort and time uh to kind of simplify this for you if you will got it I'll have more questions on day five. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, real, real quick, Dave. It's designed as a place to start. As you, as you start talking to people and getting into different scenarios, you're going to find out more about these products on your own because you're going to do your own research. So real quick, um, so this is basically what this is, is really in-depth, right? So, um, and if you... You're going to have more questions about the basics, right? About how financing works with mosaic um when you're in the proposal tool itself right you're going to have the option to choose cash or mosaic and then if you choose mosaic then you're going to have the options there's tons of options uh from like 10 year 12 year 15 year 20 year 25 year and you know the if you go with like the for example if you go with the 11.59 percent 25 or 20 year there's almost no dealer fees in that at all 
Um, so the overall cost is going to be much lower. But if you go with the 25 year 3.99, then the monthly cost is lower. So just about Got knowing it. what your actual uh, customer wants um, and how to present it to them properly, right? Um, mm -hmm. But there is tons of material that Dave's put together in this, which is great. Um, but it will take a while to kind of go through that. But the the more wise you want to be as far as knowing all the details, how it works, what the dealer fees are, that's all in here, which is great. Um, but you will see all those those uh, all that information if you just create a proposal uh, and say you want you want to do it for yourself or for your family member, then you mm -hmm. can actually go through that and see, you know, what are your options? How does it change the price if I go from this to this, right? Okay. And you kind of get more familiar with it on your own. So yeah, again, I I don't want you. To this isn't like going to college and taking a course on financing. That wasn't what this was all about. Uh, I, I don't want you to spend a whole lot of time on it. You're going to do it in, in uh, stages as things come up. I just want you to know that it's the information is there. If you seek it out. Yeah, no, I totally understand. I just needed to know, you know, what the financing is, what the minimum, you know, credit score required is. But if all of that will show as I do the quote, then that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and I, yeah, and and it's, I will, it's all, each product is listed there as far as the credit requirements. Uh, again, if you if you look at it, I think the twenty five year is six twenty. If I'm not mistaken, maybe six. Yeah, six twenty. Uh, the power switch zero is is kind of like a fallback option. Uh, to use as a selling tool where there's no payments for the first year. So I put that in the proposal structure, uh, kind of like a, a, a starting place for you guys to to uh, launch from. And if you know, um, we said that someone has bad credit, right? If you know they're like 650 or below, right? Mm -hmm. Or like 620 or below. Um, usually you always want to go, my recommendation is the 11.5% 20 year. Okay. Um, yeah. Because that one will, I've seen people with like 580s and 560s get approved with that. Um, it really depends also on their debt to income ratio. And a lot of the times people lie because they're embarrassed about their credit, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've run plenty of appointments where they're like, oh, my credit's great. And then we do it and I find out their credit's like 580, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's kind of similar to, you know, it, it, when so someone goes in to buy a car, they don't want to be embarrassed and tell you, hey, my credit's really bad. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to find out anyway, right? All right. So, um, I will, I will tell you this, um, the script that we're using, um, it took me a long time to figure out how to do this, um, and, and do it correctly. So you're going to notice that the questions are worded in a certain way. Yeah. And the reason for that is it's not the question you ask that's so important. It's how you ask the question that's important. So you could ask the same question 10 different ways and you're going to get 10 different answers. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, specifically about credit, the way we ask the question is, have you had any credit issues in the last few years? Any bankruptcies, foreclosures, any late payments, anything like that? And by asking it that way, you're going to get a more detailed, more honest response. Whereas if I asked you, Louisa, what's your credit score? You're going to give me one of three answers and none of them are going to be good. Either you're going to go tell me to go fly a kite because it's none of my business. <laughs> you're going to tell me you don't know, or you're going to give me an answer you think I want to hear. Even if you gave me that answer, I know 95% chance it's going to be incorrect. Why? Because I don't know when you ran your credit. I don't know what credit reporting agency you used. Was it TransUnion, Equifax, or TransUnion? Or for that matter, what filters were used when you pulled credit? In other words, you can go to two different finance companies and pull TransUnion report for a customer at the same time, and you're going to get two different scores. And the reason is because they use different filters. Got so the it. only credit score that matters is the finance company that we're using. 
Got it. Okay. No, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Um, I'm very comfortable making those type of questions. Um, I have been selling solar for a long time. I just wanted to know how available, readily available that information would be as I'm quoting so that I can give them options and whatnot. But yeah. That and makes again, sense. you're one of the reasons why the, the script is written the way it is, is to um, get the information that you're going to need to make the initial proposal right before you ask the more probing questions when when you uh start speaking to them on the on on the uh appointment itself all right let's keep let's, let's, let's skip ahead a little bit more and, and just, just so you much know, <laughs> yeah and just so you know lisa basically a lot of the stuff we have people like you that have been selling solar for a while and have a really really good idea of what, of what you're doing but then we have people that are like brand new to the game so it's just creating something that's, that's there to help everybody, you know? Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Cool. It's, it's more or less me meant to be a guideline, if you will. So everybody can follow. And obviously everybody's going to inject their personality and flavor and do what they want to do. But we want you to uh, kind of uh, adhere to the letter of it. Let's email this out again to everyone so everyone has the updated version. Um, and then just real quick, open it up. I mean, does anyone else have any questions? I know. Romeo, you've been calling this morning. I already sure spoke to Romeo this morning. Okay. Ken, do you have any more questions about anything to do with Sunrun or the proposals or the tools or anything like that that we can help you answer right now? Okay. Um, if questions do come up, um, just know you can reach out to me, Dalton, and Dave. Um, all of our information is in that sheet, um, and we can always help you. If one of us doesn't answer the phone, um, make sure you send a text. Um, to the person that doesn't answer and you know try somebody else if it's urgent um it would be nice to have the finance sheet though when you're saying the finance sheet um so i'm gonna let me do this share my let me share my screen real quick <clears throat> he's gonna send out so dave's gonna send out all the information i already did okay oh you already sent out. okay so all you guys should have that in your box um well, what I'm going to do is something else here, just so we're all on the same page. Because the fight, there's no, there's not a whole lot of you need for like a whole separate finance sheet. So let me show you something. Just to keep it simple. Um, well, I was giving see, them, I was giving them the information if they wanted to. Yeah. Search pieces and stuff like that. Um, so let's go to just any of these here. Let's go to a lead. Um. All right. So, first of all, when you click on in the leads right here, this has been something that's been common is, you know, you click on this and the screen goes gray. So you're like, what's going on? Um, it's just loading up this center screen. Okay. So if we click on the last name on a lead, it'll pull this up. If you're in Aurora, okay, you already created a proposal. You click edit proposal. All right, so this will pull up the proposal right here. Um, now, say I go to pricing, okay? All right. Okay, so this is on cash payment right now. What I wanna do is choose mosaic. Now, this is all in the adders. Again, this is also super, something that's super important is adders. Um, but if I, I want to choose Mosaic, you see all the products I have here. Okay. So 25 year, 3.99, 10 years, you know, I got 8%, I got 7%, 9%, 10. And this is the 11.59, 20 year. If someone has bad credit, I recommend this one here. Now, this is going to be in all of your guys' portal when you, when you actually create a lead. You'll see all this. And you want to pick... Um, something that's standard for each proposal you go into based on the knowledge that you have, right? So Lucy, you've been doing solar for a while, so you, you already know this, but you know, I typically always choose 3.99% 25 year as a default. Now, if someone tells me, hey, I actually want to pay this off in cash, awesome, let's go to cash. Or you know what, what's more important to me is not the actual monthly payment, but on the contract, I want it to show the lower amount on the contract, then I'm going to choose the 11.59%. 20 year 
because that's going to like change the the price of the contract significantly. Um, it'll probably save most people ten to twenty thousand dollars on the total cost as opposed to their monthly cost. Okay, so you have a lot of options, and at the bottom you have your power switch zero options, which you can sell that one year for free, right? And you know the way I do that is very simple. Hey, we have a one year free option right now. I'm not sure how long it's going to last for. Um, it could be around for a little while, but it might be gone next week. Um, so if you want to get hooked up right now, we can get you that option and then get that site survey scheduled for you. Okay. Um, and I just say, hey, what's the last four of your social? Okay. So a simple, just kind of a, assuming the sale, boom, done. Um, Luisa, are you familiar? You, and you're already familiar with, with Freedom Luisa, right? And all the adders and everything. Um, I'm still figuring out that part. Um, I used a different database. I come from Sonova. Okay. So I'm, I'm just learning your system now. Okay. So a couple, and this is going to be in the, the notes too, but I'll run through a two minute quick thing for you here. Um, always, you always want to add a distance adder tier two. I always add it. Um, what's going to happen is when you add certain things and then you convert it to a project, it's going to say, you actually don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need this, but you do need this. Um, so it didn't used to do that, but it does do that now. So it'll give you a chance to go back and fix it. But I, I usually will add a distance adder tier two. David, can I make a suggestion? Go back to, yeah, go go back to the, uh, what is it, the lead? Go, go back to the original page with all the options for leads and whatnot, right? Uh -huh. And do what? And look for the distance, or um, was it the third one down from? No, the but I'll show it in a second. But what, what I'm trying to say is here, what it will tell you. So, say I choose distance adder tier two. When you go to convert this to a project, okay, it'll pull up a screen and it'll it will say, "Are you sure you want to add a distance adder tier two? It's not needed." Okay, and it'll give you the option to go back and then take it out before you proceed, or it'll just take it out for you. Okay. Um, this is something new, Dave, that they started doing recently. Um, and uh, end phase IQ8, you always want to choose end phase IQ8. If you're in California, Puerto Rico, or Texas, make sure you choose this one. Okay. Um, for the panels, we like using the Genco 385s. Um, you don't even have to click this, but I click it. It'll tell you again when you convert to a project, you don't have to. Um, main panel upgrade, if they have anything under 200 amp, Choose the main panel upgrade, the main panel permit. And this stuff's going to go kind of in one ear, not the other. So I'm not even going to go any further right now. But when you're doing your first few proposals, just get a hold of, of me or Dalton or Dave and double check, hey, are, do these adders look good before you actually go to the appointment? Um, and then when you convert it to a project, um, you're going to probably have some more questions. Just get a hold of me, Dalton or Dave again, and we can help you with that as well. That's for everybody. Cool. And then any other questions as they come up, just, just reach out to us. Uh, we want you guys to be as successful as, as humanly possible. Um, and then after you get, you know, one or two projects under your belt, then this stuff's just going to be second nature for you. All right. And that is it, Dalton. Uh, do you have anything you want to share? Can we, get a hear, can we hear your voice this yeah. morning? Hey, yeah, you can. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you, all of my people, for hopping on. I appreciate you guys. Also, um, as far as the distance adder goes, when you input the install address, when you input the lead, it'll <clears throat> usually automatically populate. This is new, uh, whether the distance is too far, and you have to add a distance adder. So just so you guys are aware, whenever you input that lead, you input the address, it'll automatically populate when you click it. So. And the one thing also, like if you do want to look and what David that's, that's um, what I'm talking about is the sales lookup. Right here. The sales lookup tool. Right. So if I type in my zip code, my utility company right here. The sales lookup tool, which is right here. Um Lauren's electric. It'll say right here what's required on the utility bill. Is a distance tier adder required? No adder. Okay. Homeowner's insurance is required for here. I can't get Vivint, but I can get Google. Okay. So you could use that sales lookup tool, just kind of know and be ahead of the game on what you can and cannot do. Okay. So um, what, David, what David was saying earlier was if in this case, there's no adder, put an adder. If it's 
uh, tier one adder, make it tier two. So you're building in a cushion for yourself for uh, any add-ons later on so you're not being charged. Right. And and as you convert this to a project, like I said, it will re tell you we're going to remove this if you don't remove it. So, Dave, this is something new that they're doing now also that they weren't doing before is, you know, if I convert this to a project, um, this Carlos Vallejo one, if I go to convert to project, right, which will pop up right here um, once I have the proposal done, um, then it'll actually pull up a whole new screen. Um, and it'll show you all the adders you don't need that will automatically be re removed. And it'll show you the adders that you do need if you do need an adder and you didn't add it. Okay. Uh, and it'll give you a chance to fix that before, before moving forward. Okay. Cool. Well, I don't want to waste any, anyone else's time. Um, I recommend just, you know, hop on that dialer. <clears throat> These leads are, you know, ready to be called. Um, the people that are on, that have used the dialer so far, Setting appointments is super easy with these because these are people that really want solar um, and you just set the appointments for yourself. Um, it's a great way to do it. Uh, if you have your own networking going on, you know, if you like knocking doors, you can knock doors. Uh, but if you like hanging out in your house, uh, wearing a robe and, you know, making like a lot of money from your from your uh, home office, then this is a great way to do it. So, yep, that's it. That's all I got. Anybody else have any questions? I think that's it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if anybody does have any questions, let us know and we'll be more than happy to uh, address those. Um, want to thank everybody for their time, their patience and their understanding. And uh, let's get to it. Thanks guys. Thanks thank guys. You. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.